problem number one of chapter five, we have first city bank paying 7% simple interest. Second city bank pays 7% compound interest. You're gonna leave your $6,000 deposit in the bank for nine years and you wanna know which bank gives me more interest. Uh, the standard equation for chapter five for compounding is future value equals present value times one plus R to the T. And if I wanna calculate the simple interest, it's just PV times R times T and then add back the uh, original amount PV. So uh, to solve in first city, I earn $420 a year, which is 7% interest on 6,000. So I just get 424, 24, 24, 20 each year for nine years, just the interest on the uh, principal or present value for a total of $3,780. So my total in the bank after nine years will be 6,000 plus 3,780 or 9,780. That's how much I'll have in first City Bank. Second City Bank will give me a compound, so I get interest on interest. So my formula here is 6,000 times 1.07 to the ninth, or $11,030.76. You can see it's much higher in Second City Bank by a delta of $1,250.76. Uh, so Second City pays me more interest uh, by $1,250.76, and that's your answer to problem number one. In problem number two, we have givens in the table and we're trying to calculate future value in this uh, problem number two. The equation is future value equals present value times one plus r to the t. This is the one formula we need to know in chapter number five. <clears throat> in the first case, $2,250 11, for 11 years at 13% turns into 86.30.69. Uh, so in this case, our solution is in the uh, FV column. Um, $8,752 for seven years at 9% should come out to 1599900. Uh, $76,355 for 14 years at 12% will give us $373,155.46 and $183,796 and for eight years at 6% turns into 292, 942, and 90 cents. Those are your answers for future value for problem number two. In problem number three, we have the givens uh, as shown. Uh, this time we're looking for present value. Uh, equation is present value equals future value over one plus r to the t. It's just shifting around the variables. This time we're solving for PV. So we're given FV, we're given time, we're given rate, and we have to solve for PV. So in the uh, first one, I take 15, 451, divided by one plus 0.07 to the 13th power, and I should get an answer, because here I'm solving for PV of 641162. In the second one, I take 51, 557, uh, divided by 1.13 to the fourth, and I should get 3162087. In the third one, I take 886073, a future value, divided by 1.14 to the 29th, and I should get 19, 825, 71. Um, and let's make sure that comma is in the right place, 19, 825, 71. And the last one, 550, 164 divided by 1.09 to the 40th power, I should get 17, 51589. I can check these answers by going forward and calculating the future value. So in the first case, I can take 6411, 62 times 1.07 to the 13th, and I should get 15451, and you can do this for all four cases and check your present value answers by taking them forward in the problem and computing the future value just to make sure you've got the right answer. There are your answers for problem number three. In problem number four, chapter five, we have the givens in the table again. This time we're solving for percent R, also known as compound annual growth rate, CAGR, the, the rate that takes you from point A to point B over a specified number of years. To get the uh, percent R, I take the future value divided by the present value, take it to the one over T power, or the teeth root, as you might call it, minus one. Um, so here's the table, and again, in this case, we're solving for percent R. Um, so I have uh, future value, 297, divided by present value of 240 to the one fourth power. So we type that into our calculator as 0.25, uh, and I should get an answer solving for uh, I slash Y on our calculator. I'll get 5.47%, 5.47%. Again, I can test these and check these answers 
by going forward to future value, you take 240 times 1.0547 to the fourth power, and I should get $297. Uh, similarly, in the second case, I'll take uh, future value of 1080 divided by present value of 360 to the 118th power minus 1, and I'll get 6.29%. For uh, number 3, I take 185.382 divided by 39,000 uh, to the 1 over 19th power minus 1. I should get a rate of 8.55%. And then the last one, I take 531,618 divided by 38,261 to the 125th power, and I should, minus one, I should get 11.10%. There are your answers for problem number four. In problem number five, we are given the givens in the table, and this time we're solving for t, or the number of periods. The way we calculate t using the one formula in this chapter is we take the natural log of future value over present value divided by natural log quantity 1 plus r. This will give you a number of years to give from point A to point B. So um, in the first case, we take 1389 divided by 560, then take the natural log of that. And then in the denominator, we take 1.09, take the natural log of that, divide those two numbers, and we get a time period of 10.54 years. Once again, I can check this answer. Should be able to take 560 times 1.09 to the 10.54th power, and should get $1,389. So always check your answers whenever uh, using the uh, standard equation, future value equals present value times 1 plus r to the t. For case number two, I'm going to grow my money from $810 to $1,821 at a 10% rate. It will take me 8.5 years. In the third case, I'm going to grow my money from $18,400 to $289,715 at an interest rate of 17% compounded annually. It will take me 17.56 years. And in the fourth case, I take $21,500. And I want to grow it to $430,258 at a 15% rate, and it will take me 21.44 years. So you see this form is very, very useful in everyday life um, when we want to figure out uh, how we can grow our money from point A to point B over a certain number of years at a certain rate. There are your answers for number of periods or time in problem number five. In problem number six, we have a very practical problem uh, relating you and sending your child to college. Um, you estimate that college will cost you $300,000 when your child goes to college in 18 years. You have $65,000 saved up today. Present value means today. Um, what rate of interest must I earn if I want to get there from my $65,000 in savings to have $300,000 when my child is ready for college? Again, uh, solving the future value equation for rate, I take present future value over present value to the 1 over t power, or as I called it earlier, the t root minus 1, quantity minus 1. I take 300,000 divided by 65,000 to the 118th power. We have 18 years to grow our money, minus 1, and I get a rate of 8.868%, 8.87%. Again, I can check this answer by uh, just plugging the numbers into the future value, present value formula. I take $65,000 times 1.0887 to the 18th power, and I should get around, within a few pennies, $300,000. Few $300, so there you go, very practical use of our future value, present value, uh, lump sum, time value of money equation. There are your answers for Chapter 5.